My name is Yoram Reiter. I'm a faculty member at the Technion, at the Faculty of Biology. My major field of research is cancer immunology and immunotherapy. The major goal of what we call tumor immunology is to understand what are the differences between a normal and a cancer cell and how we make the immune system to recognize cancer cells more efficiently. We have our natural immune system which is capable to recognize foreign and self. Actually the ability of the immune system to differentiate between self and, and disease is a basis for the fact that we can be exposed to pathogens like viruses and bacteria and actually fight them very efficiently. And when you take this into a, a cancer, the immediate question is whether the immune system can recognize a, a cancer cell as something foreign, because basically a cancer cell is generated from, from our own tissues. And the answer is yes, after many years of research, uh, uh, there is clear evidence that the immune system can recognize tumor cells as non-self because they have, they have been mutated and many, many alterations occur in these cancer cells. Although there is a theory that, uh, and, and really evidence that we have all the time tumor cells generated and the immune system can, uh, uh, can kill these cells very efficiently, at a certain point the balance between proliferation, between expansion, of the tumor cells and the ability of the immune system to kill them, this uh, very delicate balance is interfered and then uh, the tumor cells get, get, get out of control. And the uh, specific research that we, as well as many other groups around the world, are working on is to understand what are the mechanisms that enable, on one hand, the immune system to recognize the tumor cells but also what enables the tumor cells to escape the immune system. And if we understand it better, we can also devise new molecules in order to potentiate and cause the immune system to work more efficiently against tumors, and this, is called, this field is called immunotherapy. So actually we combine these two areas of research in, into our work. Basic research as well as applied, or we call it today translational, because we want to translate what we are discovering in, in the basic studies to new uh, therapeutic uh, strategies and new therapeutic molecules that we are developing in the lab. We are approximately 20 people in the lab. It's a large lab. The majority of the people are PhD students. So one project in our lab is based actually on, on the ability of the immune system to recognize viruses, okay? We know that whenever we get flu, there is a very acute phase or very potent activity of the immune system in order to kill the cells that are infected with the flu virus, for example, in our lungs, in our other tissues. And this is because we have a very effect effective immune response and we have also what we call memory. Once the immune system reacted against a specific strain of, of flu, the next year actually we are immune against this strain of, of virus. And the idea behind this project is actually to, uh, to fool the immune system to think that a tumor cell is actually infected by, by a virus. So actually we've generated a molecule by genetic engineering that has two parts or two modalities. One part is composed of a targeting moiety. This targeting moiety is, is a small protein that can target itself specifically only to the tumor cells and not normal cells. For example, we are developing this for uh, indications of pancreatic cancer and lung cancer and ovarian cancer. So this targeting moiety recognizes only these cancer cells and not the normal counterparts. And the other part of the molecule is actually recruiting these cells of the immune system that are capable of recognizing a virus because we are actually putting a, a, like a red flag that belongs to the virus, we are putting it now through the targeting device or through the targeting molecule on the surface of the tumor cells. And now once the immune system uh, sees this red tag, it doesn't care whether this is a tumor cell or a virus infected cell. It just wants to kill these target cells. And we've shown that this is uh, working very, very efficiently 
in experiments in, in the test tube and in the lab and in experimental animals. And now actually a large company is, uh, took this molecule, actually we co-developed it together with this company and, uh, and is taking this molecule hopefully in the next year to phase one clinical trials in, in humans. Another example is a, a project in which uh, 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 we take advantage of the fact that in our immune system there are very, very potent cells that are capable to kill disease cells. We call them killer cells. And they can recognize disease cells as foreign and kill very efficiently. However, in cancer, these cells do not exist in sufficient amount. And they have many regulatory machineries which limit their activity. So our, our idea was to take what these cells normally recognize on tumor cells and transform it to a soluble molecule that you can produce by genetic engineering. So instead of cells now of the immune system, we have molecules, okay, that now mimic what normally the cells are doing. Cells are very difficult to engineer, to produce. It's very difficult to take these cells from the patient, expand them outside of the patient and put back these cells into the patient, but the molecules that we are making, it's very easy to produce by genetic engineering, by using just bacteria that are producing large quantities of this protein. And now we are evaluating these proteins as uh, being able to kill tumor cells. So again, we've had a proof of principle in the lab. This is a project that we started 10 years ago. But in 2002, we had a significant breakthrough on a, on a really worldwide level. We are regarded as a, as a leading laboratory in the world that are developing this type of molecules. We received four years ago an NIH grant to develop this uh, protein. And now, uh, uh, two years ago, we have established a startup company that actually now took these molecules to the clinical application. So in the lab, we are doing basic research that are related to these molecules, but all the clinical aspects and business aspects of this uh, technology is being developed by a startup company that the Technion established. We hopefully want to bring a lead molecule that we have against melanoma, which is a very deadly skin type of skin cancer, we, we hope to bring in the next year and a half uh, our lead molecule against melanoma to the clinic, to phase one uh, clinical trial. So these are two examples how basic research or, or understanding of basic uh, phenomena related to basic research of cancer immunology enable us to transform this into a, a translational research, developing new approaches in cancer immunotherapy. Our recent publication actually got a significant exposure. It, is a, it was a very elegant study that was uh, published in Science. In this study, we took cancer patients in which there is evidence that they have killer cells of the immune system penetrating into their tumors. This is a strategy that is known uh, with a, a professional name of adoptive cell transfer. Why adoptive? Because then the surgeon is taking the tumor out from the patient in the lab, people extract these killer cells from the tumor and now expand them to huge numbers. And afterwards, give these killer cells back to the patient. Okay, this is a strategy that was developed in, in Europe, in Belgium, and, and the, in the US at the National Cancer Institute. And in Israel, there is only center outside of the US that is developing this strategy is in Israel, in Tel Shomer Hospital. Now, the major problem with this uh, strategy is that when you take a tumor and you extract from this tumor the killer cells, only 20% of them respond to the tumor and 80% don't. And we ask why 80% of these killer cells don't respond and 20% respond. Now, we discovered that actually these killer cells are not a single population of cells. There are hundreds of subpopulations of cells that, are, that exist there in the tumor. And then it's very difficult to analyze them because a human being can detect only, can look only at one, two, three, four parameters. But now we've collected more than 90 different parameters, 90 different surface markers that exist on these cells, which actually the ID card of these cells. 
and the ability to analyze and actually try to understand what is the difference between the cells that are responding and the cells that, that are not responding, these differences can be looked only when you apply computational tools. And this is why we call this area system biology, because we take many, many parameters, may, many, many complicated uh, questions, and we use tools related to physics and computer sciences. So this is a, a, a great idea of a PhD student in my lab and a PhD student in, in the Department of Computer Sciences. And they actually used an algorithm that they've been developing to analyze and see whether the responding cell has a particular signature which makes them unique compared to the non-responding cells that uh, have a different signatures that make them unresponsive or not reactive. And eventually they could find a signature that is composed of between five to seven molecules that are sitting on the surface of the cells and can actually predict by an accuracy of more than 95 percent whether a particular culture that we take from the patient will be responsive or not to the tumor. So this was great result because we actually each patient that is being considered for treatment we can take a sample and predict using this algorithm whether it is a respond or whether it is capable to respond or not to the tumor. And then the we took the project even one step further. We asked, can we, by identifying this signature, can we uh, transform a non-reactive culture of killer cells into a reactive one? And we were able, in, in 10 cases out of 12 that we've uh, tested, so we took 12 patients, and in 10 out of 12 patients, we could take killer cells from their tumors, which were not reactive to start with, and transform them by manipulation of the composition of subpopulation in this mixed culture, mixed population, by manipulation, we could transform them from a non-reactive into a reactive population. So this generated a very appealing results, which are now we are continuing, and actually we are hoping to, to start with appropriate funding, uh, 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 because this was submitted to a large European, European uh, 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 consortium of people doing immunotherapeutic studies. We hope also to, to bring here uh, uh, something to the clinic, being able to translate it into more efficient uh, uh, studies in the clinic, because now we can not only predict which culture of killer cells will be more reactive against the tumor, but also to manipulate cells, these cells, and hopefully to, to cause them to be more potent against uh, the tumor. So this is our latest hot stuff that we are working in the lab and, and, and looks very promising.